Welcome back, everyone, to Yahoo Finance Live. So, how far did Chairman Powell's comments go to relieve uncertainty in the market for tech stocks? Well, I'm joined by Paul Meeks, Independent Wealth Solutions Management Portfolio Manager. Thank you for joining me today. So, obviously, given the year that tech stocks have had so far, the biggest names and FANG stocks still down year to date. How sustainable will this current rally be, you think? You know, I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh... A couple of things I do feel better about. We've now been through the quarterly earnings period, and so we have a better idea who are the tech survivors coming out of uh, COVID and who are the pretenders, and so we can focus on that list. And then we did get the hawkish statements out of the Fed yesterday, and even though they're going to be a uh, pretty stiff headwind for tech stocks and other aggressive growth companies, you know the uh, data is now known, and when it's known, it's absorbed in the market. The thing that I still worry about and it keeps me away from going all in on tech is what's happening in Eastern Europe. Because if we still have geopolitical risk, we still have risk to these stocks. And it's interesting because we saw Wedbush analyst Dan Ives saying that investors have been given the bright green light to own tech stocks. But as you mentioned, you're not all in on tech now. So what are some of the signals that you're watching for and some of the sectors that are giving you, that are keeping you up at night and not making you want to go all in? Yeah, so I continue to worry about the geopolitical risk. And even though we had a bit of a oversold bounce in tech stocks uh, the last couple of days, you know, some relief from the uh, Fed statements yesterday afternoon, you know, that still is going to be, as I said before, a pretty stiff headwind as rates rise, you depress the stock valuations. And we have, uh, and we've seen this during the most recent quarterly earnings period, you have some great companies, not good companies, great companies that have crushed analyst estimates and have also given very positive guidance, yet their stocks fall because their margins and uh, valuations continue to contract somewhat. And so I think that's uh, still going to continue, and we're not out of the woods, and so I'd continue to be super careful. So then talk about the tech stocks that you do like right now and the criteria that you're really focusing on when you're picking them. Yeah, so I'm looking at uh, companies that play into some killer themes, and uh, those are you know, pretty easy to hatch, you know, things like uh, AI and 5G wireless rollout. I'm looking for companies that, uh, regardless of what's happening around the world, are going to grow their earnings uh, this year and next. And companies that actually have a, a decent price chart. So all tech stocks have felt the pain, but if they've held up relatively well during this carnage, I think they're showing some uh, signs of optimism. And obviously, retail investors sort of assessing this carnage, trying to figure out how they should move. What is the best way, do you think, for retail investors to balance their portfolio, given what we're seeing in the market and given what we're going to see with the Fed increasing interest rates, as well as also trying to tighten its balance sheet? So I think that uh, tech is OK for long term investors. The problem is with most retail investors, they say they're long term and then they take a hit the second or third day after they bought a stock and they're disappointed. You can't be. But if you're really a long term investor, I think there is a pretty good opportunity here. But what I would do is I'd get back into the sector and I would go in only with a portion of your capital. Uh, take it uh, very slowly, very deliberately, uh, focus on the leaders among the fangs. I like all of them, but I particularly like uh, Microsoft and Google. And then there's some semiconductor stocks that have been really whacked recently. Companies like uh, Broadcom, Advanced Micro Devices. Uh, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Marvell, that I think are uh, viable. And again, go in slowly, go in deliberately. Don't put in all your capital the first day and make sure that you truly have a long-term perspective and you're not just saying it. And you raise an interesting point about chip makers. I mean, how are you viewing them now? We're obviously still seeing supply chain bottlenecks that were starting to get loosened, but now a lot of worry now as we look at Russia and Ukraine. And that's also predicted to push up raw materials prices. What should people be aware of when it comes to the chip makers? So the chip makers can be somewhat of a beneficiary of tight supplies because they're doing the supplying. However, uh, neon gas, which is a major product coming out of uh, that part of the world that's under uh, wartime threat, is uh, important as a raw material to make semiconductors, and so is the metal palladium. But I still think that that is mostly in the stocks at this point, right? The Russians went in. They've been in ever since the third week of uh, February, 
And that's probably baked in, at least that risk, unless we have a lingering conflict in the prices of the semiconductors. And the, the, the names that I mentioned just now, I think, are the cream of the crop within that industry, within that sector. And what would you recommend either starting to rotate out of at this point in your portfolio? I think some of the defensive names, you know, they've uh, held up uh, pretty well. And obviously, energy has been great. Now, energy was a sector that was uh, the dog of the 11 economic sectors of the S&P for many years, uh, rolling into the tight supplies, only exacerbated at the beginning of 2022 by the war. So you know what you could do if you had a long-term perspective, you want to be a contrarian, take some money out of uh, energy and some of these super expensive commodity stocks and food stocks, and then start to, again, slowly and deliberately rotate back into uh, tech, not indiscriminately, but in some of those focus names. All right, everyone, do your homework. Thank you so much. Paul Meeks, the Independent Wealth Solutions Management Portfolio Manager. Thank you for your time today.